Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss, and this month we'll be looking at the career and music of Polish YouTube composer Gerard Drozd. I have a lot of composer friends around the world who are well established professionally, but you'd be lucky to find any mention of them on the internet, let alone YouTube. And then there's Gerard, who seems to be everywhere you look. The success of Gerhardt's music lies in its lyricism, the perfect way that it fits the instruments for which it was written, and its unpretentiousness. Gerhardt is not pretending to be the next Chopin, or the next Rodrigo, or the next J.S. Bach. He is just composing, composing, composing. And musicians out there are performing what he writes, and then coming back for more. Those musicians read like a who's who of great talent, from young virtuosos at the start of their career, like Sofia Urevayeva, all the way to established international artists like Lily Afshar. Let's take some time out to discuss why a composer is prolific. A lot of music historians marvel at the hundreds of concertos written by Baroque composers like Vivaldi or Telemann. This has created the notion that some composers are overflowing reservoirs of music, constantly churning out page after page of scores like automatic composing machines whether anyone wants it or not. This is total baloney ignoring the actual realities of being a working composer. No, the reason why composers of that time produced so much is because they were constantly being commissioned to write something new by other musicians, pure and simple. Over the course of a lifetime, if you write a dozen or more pieces a year, it really adds up, as it has with Gerhardt, who has written over 200 pieces by now and has a full slate of commissions for 2011 for new orchestral works, chamber music, and solos for cello, piano, oboe, and, of course, more guitar music. The guitarists of the world have discovered Gerhardt's unusually sensitive, daring, and perfectly crafted scores, and they are programming him in their concert repertoire and on their recordings. And to judge by these playlists from classical radio stations, his music is finding a growing broadcast audience as well. Gerhardt's big hit right now, to judge from the many interpretations out there, is his Adagio Opus 44 for solo guitar. Here is one of the best renditions by the great Italian guitarist Giulio Tampolini. It's an elegant yet simply stated meditation, an homage to Johann Sebastian Bach. This work has become so popular that it practically has a life of its own, and Gerhardt has been asked to arrange it for other instruments like piano or string quartet but it's most powerful in its original setting for guitar. Look how Tampolini plays it, and how the notes fit perfectly into the natural framework of the left-hand reach. This is an example of how a musical mood is shaped and defined by idiomatic composing, where the soul of an instrument can be evoked by a composer who really understands the feel of it under a musician's hands, and how it speaks to them. Tampolini's also done some excellent videos of Gerard's preludes for guitar, and posted nearly half of the 24 movements on his YouTube channel. Once again, Gerard has written some music that fits the guitar wonderfully, building on older models of form and style to create his own distinct voice as a composer. Another great classical guitarist, Marcelo de la Puebla, is featured on this upload of Gerard's piece, Yiddish Impression. This feels to me like one of those great concert pieces by Torova, or Castelnuovo Tedesco, something that you're bound to hear at every other solo guitar recital. And this piece deserves the comparison. Listen to how well the full spectrum of the guitar sound is utilized, and how the guitarist is given ample opportunities to inject his own personality into the music. Guitar is not the only instrument over which Gerard has exhibited mastery. He also understands piano writing with the depth of a Paderewski or a Busoni. 
Shostakovich also comes to mind from time to time in this sparkling collection of preludes and fugues for solo piano. Not one, but two different pianists have uploaded movements on YouTube. The pianist we are listening to now, Sofia Urevieva, is an up-and-coming virtuoso who is on her way to an international career as a soloist, and she brings that sense of Russian soul into her playing, plus her own wonderfully tempered emotional outlook. Listen to how she balances the elements in this D major prelude, allowing the dancing motive to stand out, trading off hands, and bringing all the content together in a thoughtful way that stands guard over it like a watchful shepherd. It's interesting to contrast this approach with that of Japanese pianist Keiko Nishizu. In this C minor prelude, Keiko plays with a more impressionistic approach, reminding me a bit of that great Debussy interpreter Walter Gieseking in places. Listen to how she allows the left hand motives to break out a little bit as this octave melody gets underway, and how she moderates the end of the phrase as the episode exhausts itself. There are quite a few other pieces on Gerard's channel, all worth a listen, as well as favorites that are linked from a half a dozen other sites of musicians who have uploaded their readings of his music. A pretty impressive showing by YouTube standards for a contemporary concert music composer. But the standout piece by far is the Concerto Rhapsodico for four guitars and orchestra, performed by the Guitar to Quartet with the Lublin Philharmonic. This is a piece that has that sunny Iberian quality reminiscent of composers like De Faya and Rodrigo, and yet bears all the individuality of Gerard's other works. Let's take a look at the score now and analyze some of the structure and orchestration that makes this piece great. Like most guitar concertos, it's orchestrated lightly, with doubled winds and horns, one trumpet, no percussion, and strings. Though the guitarists were amplified in this performance, the concerto is scored in such a way that in an intimate setting with a very sensitive conductor and balanced ensemble, it would still be possible to hear the soloists clearly without microphones. Gerhardt's treatment of the guitar quartet is imaginative, bringing individual players out into the open, letting them interact in complex patterns, and sometimes treating them like one big 24-string super guitar. Gerhardt is also poetic in his handling of the orchestra, using very understated approaches to texture to sometimes devastating effect. Listen to this excerpt from the second movement, how the clarinets and bassoon cushion the horn solo, leading to a fragment of oboe melody, and then duo flutes over horns, merging with the upper strings to reintroduce the guitars. It's concerto scoring that makes the orchestra partner, rather than competitor, with the soloists. This 16-minute concerto is also a lesson in how form can be used to pull in the listener and tie together the elements of a work in ways that reference, resonate, and fulfill your expectations, yet have the qualities of freshness and surprise. Don't cheat yourself by listening to just one movement. Really take the time to listen to the whole concerto all the way through. Watch for the way themes recur from movement to movement, how the work develops structurally and emotionally, and how the sound of the orchestra supports and makes sense of the quadruple conversation of the guitars. This is first-class concerto writing. Before I wrap things up, I also want to recommend Gerard's excellent piece Carpe Diem, with guitarist Eduardo Catamario and the Silesian String Quartet. A 
Along with its energy and wit, there's a craft at work that really puts Gerhardt in the top rank of composers that you might see on YouTube. This is music that presents the kind of awesome challenges at which great musicians are happy to fling themselves. Look at the dynamic part writing, the contrasts, and the interplay. It's a piece that I hope to see make its way into the standard guitar chamber music repertoire in time. While I've been working on this segment, Gerhardt has been preparing to host this year's International Guitar Festival in Gliwice, an annual event of which he is artistic director. Gerhardt's efforts have really put this southern Polish city on the map for guitarists, as some of the top soloists and guitar ensembles have attended and performed in Gliwice over the past decade and a half. This is the case of one composer bringing the world to his doorstep, as surely as his music has found its way from Poland to the rest of the world. Even if you forget all about Gerard Drozd after watching this video, I predict that you will run into his music again before too long, perhaps in a concert hall or CD shop next time. So that's October 2010's YouTube Composer of the Month. Next month we travel to Hong Kong to meet up with a friend of mine from San Francisco whose career is catching fire. See you then. Thank you.